What was your first What was your experience first experience of the internet? Of the internet? First experience of the internet doing me any good actually didn't come properly, you know, until 1984 with email, and you're talking 1969. So in the meantime, it was that it was just for a small select few. I think I've had the internet since I was a baby, because my dad was always into it. We started with a 56k modem, and so that took a long time to connect, a lot of beeps. Uh, I used to be able to hum it back, exactly. I don't think I'd do it, I could do it now. Um, try, try. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> did you, did you, no, no. Um, it was 15 years before I saw any benefit from that so-called breakthrough. <laughs> yeah. What, what was that benefit, just? It was email. So the first thing I remember was in 1984 when I was a PhD student at the University of Sheffield and we were connected to the Janet Net for the first time and we got access to email. So a group of five or six of us gathered around a terminal and sent an email to Edinburgh to Andrew Blake, who was recently the, uh, the director of the Turing Institute. Um, and we sent him an email that said, hello, Andrew. <coughs> we then waited three days for it to arrive, and we had to keep ringing him up to find out when it had got there, but it did get there. I remember using old computers that were next, networked up in my primary school. They were like BBC computers, and we were doing some nomad game, uh, and that was networked at least. Whether it was online, I'm not sure. I think mostly it was web access, and. Uh, I was building websites fairly young at 15, which was fun to do, but um, yeah, just slow loading, noisy internets is what I remember. One of my first memories, I guess, is sitting in an internet cafe in Cambridge a number of years ago um, with a one of the first web browsers. So was it, I want to say like Netscape or something like this and opening up the web browser and actually seeing web pages for like the first time really. Um, that was probably my, one of my first memories. I, this must have been I'd 25 years ago. So, you know, not a long time ago, but uh, yeah, a while ago. So I was uh, in the University of, Technical University of Berlin and we had, yeah, we had the first um, uh, connection to ARPANET or whatever it was at the time. And um, so what I was doing, yes, I, I, was, I was subscribed to the, uh, to the Anarchy mailing list, which was pretty, pretty interesting. So uh, my dad worked at BT uh, during the 90s, so he was involved with um, like really helping roll the internet out. So it was quite cutting edge in our house. And I remember we had dial-up and having to hang up the phone every time we wanted to use the internet. I used to drive my mum spare because she'd want us to get off in case somebody called. Well, one of the first times I went online, I started reading FRAC, which is a, uh, an ASCII-only um, digital mag magazine about how to hack telephones in particular and, and how to get free onto the onto the internet system. And yeah, I just thought it was fantastic. So for me, I think it was going around my friend Alan's house and uh, going on bulletin board systems to arrange games of Doom 2. So that was probably what, the early 90s, 94, 95, something like that. Uh, and then coming home and learning about Apple's eWorld, which was a whole new world for you. I was really excited. I thought, it's gonna be GUIs now, isn't it? You're gonna have like a picture of your town and you go to your little email area. And it was not like that. <laughs> it was really bad. <laughs> Or this whole community of people who are trying to understand this a system that was still being developed and it was sort of like a, an active race of people trying to figure out how it works and how you can subvert it. It was took forever because the telcos vested interests got in the way. They wanted to run the world and they had to be told firmly that it wasn't just them. So yes, <laughs> of course if you were to ask me uh, how, if it took that long to get to email, how long did it take from the 1969 to get to the World Wide Web and browsers everywhere? Well, 1994, it took 25 years for it to get beneficial enough that people could casually visit other sites and see web pages and stuff. Quite amazing. I don't actually remember uh, the first time I got on the internet. Um, it probably would have been at school, I would think. 
Um, we did eventually get America Online, but I think I would have seen it first at school. I sort of remember search engines coming out. I remember you know, the early days of searching for things um, and sort of being excited by that. Uh, and also curious, you know, I remember contributing to was it Open Directory, something like that. I remember like that, that being like an independent Yahoo you know, Directory equivalent. And I remember sort of adding sites to that and sort of you know, playing my part in like, you know, as a very young child, contributing to what I felt was going to be the future of how people find things. Yeah, it was a really long time ago when I was using one of those old, more than uh, 28 kilobytes that took like two minutes to connect. And then my father was saying, what the hell is that noise that you have when you take the phone? Um, I think it was like back in Spain, something called Terra.s that then collapsed at some point. Uh, I was pretty fun actually, but that's the only uh, search engine that we had at the time and you couldn't do much with it, to be honest. Yeah, but that's what, quite fun at the time. We got an amazing three kilobytes per second download, you know, so that was maybe a, you know, if you were downloading an MP3, that would be you know, quite a while it would take as opposed to fractions of a second. You had the, the phone cable that I was dragging through the whole house and you'd have to ask the parents because it was like, oh, they were still, I'm, I'm from Luxembourg, so we still had a different currency and it cost like, you know, five francs per minute to use the internet and grandma couldn't call. Yes, the good old days. I do remember that as soon as I understood what the internet was and how it worked, I immediately started trying to make my own website. Um, which I did. It was terrible. Uh, but that's my, my, my early memories of the internet are like trying to write HTML in all caps in Notepad. It was a simpler time. I was thinking last night about bulletin boards and the fact that actually with so social media, we're just going back to doing exactly the same things now. It's great. You know, we're just posting stuff for people to see. It's the same stuff. The first stuff I remember, I suppose, is uh, listening to a modem dial up to connect to web pages. Not that there were that many web pages then, um, but the ones that did exist seem to be absolutely loaded with blinking, flashing banners saying under construction and garish cyan fonts. Uh, it was a nightmare. First memory of using the internet was in 1994. Um, my brother just got back from university and had found out about the internet and so then we had to have it at home um, and so we bought a 28.8 US robotics modem for our Acorn Archimedes A3000 which was the family computer. You couldn't do much web browsing at the time because the A3000 wasn't much good at it um, so I spent a lot of time on Telnet chat rooms um, so they were called talkers at the time. Uh, it was a bit like a BBS you could log on and talk to people on in kind of a, a terminal interface. Um, so I spent hours on that and then it all came crashing down when after a month of having that we got the phone bill uh, which was for about 150 pounds basically all of me or all, all for my dial-up internet talking uh, and from then on I was limited to half an hour a day on the internet. When I started using the internet uh, I, I was doing my um, master's uh, studies so and it was back in my country of origin, origin in, in Mexico, uh, in a city called Chihuahua, like the dog. Felt pretty exciting, you know. I guess that's probably one of the reasons that I went into computer science, is you kind of saw this massive opportunity of, you know, all this, suddenly all this stuff's available and there's things we can do with it. And yeah, let's try and avoid some of the more uh, visually unappealing fonts, but <laughs> there's things we can do with the internet, right? I've never got any better at that, by the way. Websites were a lot simpler back then. So I remember the start of Google. It looked kind of the same, but you know, different font and stuff. It was obviously not quite the juggernaut it is now. Um, and, and then just fun websites like hamsterdance.com. I don't know if you remember this. No, what's hamsterdance? Um, so animated uh, GIFs were a big thing back in the uh, late 90s. Uh, I mean, GIFs are coming back a bit, actually. But I just want to say that, you know, we, we started this, you know, we, we, our, our, my generation started the animated GIF in a big way. Uh, so hamsterdance.com, I went on the Wayback Machine, the Internet Archive, and found it. And uh, this is hamsterdance.com. It had fun music. Yeah, it had lots of animated hamster GIFs. It serves no purpose at all. Oh, that's still what the internet's for, actually, serving very little purpose. But, you know, back then, they took it to a, to a different level. Uh, so, yeah, hamsterdance.com and other animated GIF-related nonsense. Can we put a year on this, roughly? Well, this, I'm looking here at 2000, but I would say 1999, 2000, some, for somewhere around that. We, we, you didn't start, I mean, Facebook didn't exist until 2004. So, this was before all that. 
where websites were, if you look down, websites were mostly text. Hit counters at the bottom of websites were a big deal, right? We, you know, people wanted you to know that a thousand people have been to their website. Just like likes to that. <laughs> yeah, yeah right? exactly, it's just like that, it's just like that. If you look, the oldest Usenet manager, messages about me is that I had a motorbike accident in uh, 1980 something, 81 or something, 82, I don't know. And the first big embarrassment I, I had for a company, I developed a, a parser generator in Common Lisp. And then somebody asked, uh, they were interested in the code, and I was going to send it to him. And then I sent it to the mailing list, and, and uh, I wasn't supposed to do this. And then he, he told me, oh, this, uh, the, your code is now already in Texas, and where else? And I said, oh, sh I just, I just posted the code I, which I had written for this company on the, on the internet. So that was one of my first embarrassments in misusing uh, the internet, yeah. So I think the first time I really remember going online was probably at primary school. Um, and we used to have some maths lessons in the computer room where we get to play maths games. Very educational <laughs> online. Um. <laughs> 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 Forgot about that. Um, I remember uh, asking my dad like multiple times, "How do I spell Google?" Um, but I could never remember. And there were, be before Google, I remember sort of typing in "how to program dot com" and other things dot com in the hope that it would find the you know something interesting. But, but actually, websites loaded nice and quickly, even on a fifty six k modem, because there's really only about five images and some text on here. So you know maybe. Uh, it wasn't so bad. I think all my friends at primary school had email addresses by the final year and we'd be emailing each other after school. I lived in a, in a house with 11 guys, 11 students and, and for quite a long time. And I built our own server that allowed everybody to you know, use the internet through it. And, and actually we first used a coaxial cable. It was an end-to-end -end cable. Uh, but then at some point we moved to ethernet um, but I was amazed how at that time all passwords were just sent on plain text. And because I wrote the server, I could drop all the packets and I could sniff all the passwords. And you know, and people didn't believe me that that, that, that was done. And I just showed one of my one of my student friends like, look, is that your password? He said, damn. Said, yeah, so I got it. Yeah. <laughs> what sort of era is this? Is we in the 19? So I so I started going online in 1995. Uh, so that was very early. So it was things like Gopher and, and Telnet and, and arcane library methods. There, there, there was no internet search yet at that time. We had AOL in our house and we were, there was that annoying noise where it was dialing in and it would get like three stages across and that little AOL person would move along. And then, um, yeah, and then every web page would be like, <laughs> loading, got a bit of a picture. That's, yeah, that seems to be my early memories, I think. When I first started using the internet, we didn't use the web that much. The Atari wasn't up to it, particularly before I got actual TCP IP connectivity. One of the things we did was we emailed people. And I can remember that I was a big fan of Babylon 5, still am. And at that time, the writer, Joe Michael Straczynski, had his email address public. And I can remember emailing him with questions about things in the show, and he would respond. So that was great. You were sort of emailing the people who were creating things. Well, my first memories of going online, I was in a student house in the early 90s and a friend of mine bought a 14,400 modem and he had somehow come up, well, discovered some phone numbers for BBS's bulletin board systems. I think it was bulletin board system. Anyway, BBS is where you could go on to um, a bulletin board and leave posts or read things or download things from them and this BBS would allow them you to have a certain amount of internet time through their system so that was my first memory of going online we sent a few emails we looked at a few things and I suppose it went from there. 50 years of the internet this week Phil what, what's your memories of the internet? Unfortunately I'm now nearly 52 and my memory is much depleted and deteriorated compared to what it used to be. I can't really remember, it's, it's ridiculous, I can't remember sending a first email. Um, I certainly, I was at university between 1985-1990, undergraduate degree, and I, I certainly remember mucking around with the mainframes, mucking around with the vaxes and, and playing around, but I can't remember sending an email. What I can vividly remember, however, is going to um, a synchrotron, which is a particle accelerator, we condensed matter physicist 
physicists aren't so much interested in the particles, we're interested in the light those particles give off. And that was in a place called Daresbury, which is uh, pretty well equidistant between Liverpool and Manchester, right in the middle of Liverpool and Manchester. And I remember going there to do an experiment and sending an excited email back saying, you won't believe it, they've got a, a browser here and you can actually see images on it. It downloads images and puts it without any sort of FTP stuff. And that's my overriding memory, getting so excited of a browser, it was Netscape or Nutscape as they used to call it, um, that uh, brought up the images. And I remember sort of that type of thing. Um, that's my overriding memory. And of course, dial-up, but everybody says dial-up, I'm sure. So. I had an Amiga computer, right? This is like an um, Amiga 500 or 1200, I can't remember. And I remember spending hours downloading the uh, Debian 2.0 distribution from the internet. Uh, this is probably, you know, it's probably like 50, 60 megabytes or something like that. Hours and hours downloading it so I could install it because I'd heard about this Linux thing. I was interested in it. And so I, I, so I was downloading these packages and packages and like gradually sort of installing it on my, uh, on my Amiga. And that's sort of one of the earliest things I remember. I also remember, again, sort of going on to download demos. So, you know, people uh, would write these kind of demos for the Amiga, pushing the hardware to the limit. And, you know, this is like two or three megabytes. And, you know, it's like hours sort of downloading just to kind of watch this demo. Because you used to have to get that stuff from public domain disks. So you'd send some money through the post and say, I want these disks, and you'd get these disks back in the post. And so being able to do that uh, via the internet was a kind of completely different experience. But, you know, obviously it took a really, really long time. I remember emailing a friend who was in Australia on a gap year, and they were on a university system over there, assuming that we'd be doing backwards and forwards emails. So they, this email popped up and they sent a reply and thought we'd be back on it, but we didn't go on, online again for a couple of days. So um, yeah, it was, it, it was definitely in its infancy, that sort of system for us as consumers at home, even though the internet was obviously whatever it already was 20 years old or whatever it was already. I also remember actually with it going back to the Amiga again, spending hours trying to configure uh, something called AMI TTP, which is like a TTP stack for the Amiga. Um, and it was really, you know, I, I had no experience of using these sorts of uh, bits of software, like, you know, networking software. So I was spending hours trying to configure it just to get online. And I completely failed. And I think we ended up buying some kind of, um, some other TCP stack software. First time I saw the internet was when I was at work and they brought in this computer and plugged their modem in and went, this is a great new thing, the internet. We went to the search thing and it brought back hardly any results because there was nothing on there. So we kind of went, come back to us when there's actually things on there. A couple of years after that, I got an email address and started, it was actually a good communication tool and things started appearing on the web and it started actually being practical then. So, but until then we'd used Janet at university, but it wasn't, didn't really have internet connectivity. All you could do was talk to um, students and academics. So my first uh, memory of the internet is this ability to see text images from, you know, other places on earth. I wasn't there, but I could read what other people were saying and thinking. That was fantastic. First, electronic communications through the um, chat uh, programs at the time. Uh, if I recall correctly, there was something called IRC chat. To be honest, I don't get it. I can, but yeah. So I do remember the um, chat thing program that will allow you to, you know, talk to people that you haven't met before, and that was. Strange, but very interesting feeling. Really the first things I can remember, which can't be the first things, but it's like um, using IRC, uh, using things like the undernet, <laughs> and uh, using FTP servers, this type of thing. And uh, I remember we did, an, very early on, we did an OECD project that looked at um, the use of digital technology and the internet for education. So we started communicating and chatting via IRC chat rooms, etc. We were in the maths building, which is what we are today. And we didn't actually have a connection to the outside world, but psychology did. So you could connect across to psychology's computer, dial up London, log into one of London's nodes, and then you could use the internet um, very, very slow. And of course it was going across satellite. 
So you connect to, I don't know, there weren't very many sites, but there were a few places you could pick up software. So you, you'd log into those. But because it was going over a satellite, you, you typed like letter A, and it would take about three seconds for the A to come back. And, and so you'd start typing, and then you'd get very confused halfway through and have to delete it all. And this was all painfully slow, but we thought it was wonderful at the time. First time I used it for my own benefit, <laughs> <laughs> was uh, trying to contact Alan Guth in, in uh, he was at MIT, he still is, one of the most famous cosmologists alive, it came up with the idea of inflation and I wanted to visit the US, I was, a, I was at Imperial and we used to have to go up a corridor, there was the only computers that were, there were three, three computers up, up at the end of the corridor and we'd have to go into this really dark room and the computers were green little symbols going across them. That was the, the font style. And you'd type in your message and, very, and then send it. And you'd hear it go ping. And each of the destinations, it was, it was as if it was being carried. Each line was pinging, pinging, pinging. And then eventually it pinged Alan.Guth at MIT. And it said, message received. And I thought, oh, wow, <laughs> it was the first time. And then you have to wait about a day or two days, and then I kept going back and got nothing. And then one day he said, yeah, come along, come on. So I went over to the US. I saw Alan Guth, I saw Chandrasekhar, who won the Nobel Prize. Yeah, so I, I, I raised a tour. I went to Chicago, I went to MIT, I went to Berkeley, and uh, it was great. The internet. The internet rules our lives. <laughs> Hugh Smith uh, and he had contacts with UCL and so we got into this sort of internet and ARPANET and early connections to that and I started working on um, email software to try and make sense of all this stuff that was going on, get rid of all these exclamation marks.